Hey YouTube, you're watching Ready Set Drone and today I'm going to give you a full review of the new DJI Spark. I consider the Spark to be an entry level drone that is more than a toy drone. It's one that has a lot of features and functionality and technology packed into it. So this is not your uh, typical $50 or even $200 toy drone. Uh, but more of a prosumer or um, beginner drone for someone who wants to get a little bit more serious about the hobby and sport. So what I'm going to be talking about today is the $699 Fly More package, which includes this remote control. You can fly the thing with gesture mode or with uh, just your phone, but I don't recommend it. It's not nearly as much fun. It's not as smooth. You can't get as good of shots and you don't get as good a range as you do using the remote control. So if you're going to get a Spark, I recommend getting one that has the extra battery and this remote control. So now the DJI Spark comes with um, a built-in camera and a two-axis gimbal. The camera is a 12 megapixel video and photography camera. It does video and photos. Um, there is a slot in the back here where your micro SD card goes. You just kind of lift it up like like this and there's a slot right in there where the micro SD card goes. Uh, the gimbal on this camera is a two axis gimbal meaning that it does uh, pitch and roll but not yaw. Pitch is this way forward and backwards kind of uh, uh, nose up nose down. Roll is left and right it's kind of um, wings up and or wings up and down and then uh, yaw is rotating like this. The gimbal does not compensate for yaw and you can really see that in the footage if you do yaw while you're flying. It has a 3S battery that is 1,480 milliamp hours. Uh, it's a small battery and milliamp hours is, as I've said before, kind of like the amount of fuel in your tank. So uh, it's not a lot of fuel in your tank and therefore it's not gonna have a great deal of flight time. As a matter of fact, the flight time claims to be 16 minutes. Um, it's really closer to 12 if you fly the battery down to 20%. The battery also is what kind of serves as the bottom of the quad when you're uh, setting on the ground. If you take the battery off and you set the set the quad down, you notice it kind of sits at an angle because uh, it's missing its back end. This is basically the back end of the airframe when it's when it's attached. So uh, I usually leave the batteries on if I've charged them. And of course it has a standard DJI uh, set of lights on the back that tell you what your charge is and also if the, if the uh, quad is on or off. One really cool thing that's new for DJI is that uh, the Spark comes in five different colors. I've got three of them here. I've got sky blue, alpine white, lava red, and it also comes in meadow green and I think uh, sunrise yellow, I think are the other two colors. But yeah, the colors are a neat little um, distinguishing factor so you can kind of uh, pick the one that best suits you. So now with this remote control flying, you get about 2,000 meters of range or two kilometers. Um, that is a pretty good distance. I mean, honestly, there are people who want to fly further and the Phantom, the Inspire, the Mavic, those will all go quite a bit further, uh, more than twice as far. But honestly, for casual pilots who are just learning or are just wanting to do selfies, uh, I think two kilometers is plenty far. Plus with the small battery and the short battery life, you don't want to go too far away with this thing because it's got to get back to you unless you want to go find it when it, when it lands itself because the battery went out. So there's different ways you can configure. If you're flying with your phone only, then the, uh, then the Spark has its own Wi-Fi connection, Wi-Fi signal that it sends out, and you connect your phone to the Spark using that Wi-Fi signal, just like you do some of the toy drones uh, that you fly with. Now, if you have the remote control, then you actually don't connect your phone via Wi-Fi to the Spark, but you connect to the remote control. It's a different Wi-Fi network. And when this is bound with your Spark, your Spark no longer gives off a Wi-Fi network. Um, this does. So that's great because it's very close and it's a pretty good connection. But then the really the best way to do it is there is what's called a OTG cable, which is a, I think it stands for on the go. It's a, it's a small USB to a larger female USB. You plug that in here and then you plug your phone's charging cable, whether it's an Android phone or an iPhone with a, a lightning on one end and USB on the other, you plug it into that and it connects you directly to this remote control. Now, why would you want to connect via cable instead of um, using the Wi-Fi network? You just get a better signal and you get a faster, uh, smoother image. When you're flying, 
uh, with the Wi-Fi connected, you'll notice that it does tend to be a little bit shaky and break up from time to time. But when you're flying with uh, the cable connected, it is a lot smoother. So I definitely recommend getting that OTG cable and using that as your connection so that you can actually um, uh, fly further, have a better, smoother image. The OTG cable is like $5 on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. So if you want to get one. Now I'm going to take you through real quick what I consider to be the pros and cons of the DJI Spark. Um, first of all, let's talk about the pros. As I was saying, it's very small, it's very portable, and you can carry it anywhere. I mean, this thing right here holds everything you need, spare batteries, charger, remote, the, the Spark. This is soft-sided, and this is actually what comes with it when you order that combo pack. Uh, the nice thing is it is really nice and portable and lightweight. The downside is it's soft-sided, and if it got crushed, if you threw it in the back of your car and you threw another suitcase on top of it, you know, you could end up damaging your Spark. So uh, I would consider a hard shell case if you're going to be traveling with it much, but if you're just taking it out for a day at the beach or whatever, this is a great little case that it comes with the uh, combo pack. My second pro is a kind of general statement about the Spark, and that is there's just a ton of technology built into this little tiny uh, quad for the price. Um, I've seen a lot of comments since the thing came out, people saying it's too expensive, why would you, why would you spend $700? My point being though, that in this price range, this is an amazing piece of technology, and I would love to hear from somebody who, who thinks it's too expensive or thinks it's a bad deal, uh, what do you think is better for $700? Uh, you know, that includes two batteries, includes the case, includes the triple charger and the remote control, I, I, and, and a mechanical gimbal. Um, I know that you know, there's Parrot and there's Autel and there's some others like that, but for something that's this size and has all those features, I really feel strongly that this is a, a, a quite a value for the cost that you're paying. So as I said before, it does come with a triple charger for your batteries. Uh, it's a flat triple charger that plugs into the wall and allows you to charge three batteries at the same time. And the nice thing is it doesn't actually charge them in sequence, it does charge them at the same time. So you could put three batteries on it and all three of them will be cooking away for uh, an hour and a half, two hours, and be ready to go at the same time. You don't have to wait for one to finish before the next one starts. So uh, I feel like DJI really got it right by, by including a charger that does more than one battery at a time. The next pro is sport mode. This thing is, uh, it gets up to 31 miles an hour, which is actually slower than the Mavic in sport mode. I have to say that normal mode is actually a little bit slow in my opinion, so the contrast between it flying in normal mode and it flying in sport mode is pretty huge. So when you, uh, when you do put it in sport mode, you, you see the difference. Um, it's a lot of fun to fly. The other thing that this drone has that others in its price range uh, don't, and really, very, very few other drones actually have anything like it, uh, is the gesture mode. You know, it's done with this big sensor in the front that can see you and knows, recognizes a face. It also has sensor on the bottom so it can recognize your hand. So when you do the gesture mode, it sounds a little bit gimmicky, but it really is a lot of fun and it's a pretty magical experience to be able to move your hand around and watch the quad follow as, as you track your hand. Now you have to do it very precisely. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't do well when you're fast or sloppy with your gestures but if you follow the instructions you can do all kinds of things with the gestures including uh, take selfie pictures uh, move it around with your hand send it away from you bring it back to you put it in follow mode the only thing that I wish it could do in gesture mode that it currently can't is take video so currently if you're in gesture mode uh, if you're flying it with using gestures you can't start the video using a gesture. You can start the video using your phone, you can start the video using the remote, uh, which is fine, but you just can't do a gesture and start it rolling video. So the Spark works with DJI Go 4 app, and built into DJI Go 4 is a bunch of intelligent flight modes. Particularly impressive is the follow mode. It, I've done some experiments with it in an ATV and in a car, and it follows very, very well uh, just using the, the app right out of the box. So it's something to consider um, that you get those intelligent flight modes with the Spark, um, and it's a pretty big plus in my opinion. In addition to the intelligent flight modes, it's also uh, got sensors for obstacle avoidance. Now, it does not have them on top, and it does not have them on the side, and it does not have them on the back. It only has them in the front and the bottom. So it's going to avoid uh, obstacles if it's going towards them or if it's going to da go down on them. You know, if it's going to land on, hit something as it's as it's going down, it'll it'll take off going up. Um, 
So keep that in mind, uh, you know, because if you fly a Phantom, that does have a lot more sensors and a lot more uh, obstacle avoidance built in. This one's only in the front and the bottom, but uh, for a drone this size, that's great, particularly the front one. I've been flying it through trees and in the house and things like that, and it's saved me from running into stuff several times. So uh, it's a pretty nice thing to have that obstacle avoidance built in. And then my final uh, pro that I want to point out is that it does work with DJI goggles. Um, it doesn't work wirelessly. You actually have to plug the goggles into the remote. And again, that little um, it's that little USB port that's right here in the middle. Um, that's where you plug it into the goggles. But once you plug it in, the goggles work really well. With this one, I found that if you do get more than about 70 yards away, you do start to get uh, some freezing and a little bit of hesitation in the goggles. Not so much that you can't fly, I haven't had that issue, but, um, but noticeable. So that's one thing to keep in mind. If you're going to use the goggles, you probably want to stay in a fairly tight range, you know, less than 100 yards, less than 50 yards uh, distance from it as you're flying because um, if you go much further, you will start to see these dropouts. Again, that might be a firmware thing that might get updated. If it does, um, I, will, I will be the first to uh, celebrate it, but right now, uh, the goggle flying experience is good, but not as good as it is with um, the Mavic or the Phantom. So now I want to take you through my cons of the DJI Spark, and there are a few of them. Uh, the first thing I'm going to say is that uh, I had a pretty rough experience with both uh, this one and this one when I first uh, started them up and flew them. They were uh, outdoors, and I had set everything up, I had made sure firmware was updated, made sure everything was calibrated, and both of them were very erratic when I started to fly, uh, meaning that they were trying to go in their own direction. I was able to use the remote to keep them in a single place and not crash, but, uh, but had I not been quick on my feet and been able to use the remote to keep them in place, I may very well have had, had them crash on that first flight. So um, it was weird because I took them both up to uh, school where I usually fly. It's a big open field. and you know, there wasn't anything that was causing any inter interference, but that first flight, the first few minutes on the battery was not good. I landed them both and at that point uh, let them sit for a little while and I made sure I had a lot of satellites, 13, 14, 15 satellites. Um, and after I got through that first flight, landed, let it sit for a little while and then flew again, it got better. And then the second battery was perfect, uh, was, was exactly what I was expecting. So my piece of advice would be if you do get a spark and you're going to go fly it for the first time, take it out to a big field, make sure it's uh, someplace where it's not going to run into anything uh, and just be really vigilant about the first time you put it in the air to make sure that you're paying a lot of attention, kind of letting it get everything dialed in. Um, and once I did that, I haven't had any problems, but that first flight on both of them were a little bit rough. So I want you to keep that in mind as you're uh, trying out your spark for the first time is, is just be really vigilant with that first flight. My second con or negative about the spark is the two axis gimbal. Now, you know, a lot of people are going to say, well, a two axis gimbal is way better than no gimbal. And yes, it really is. I agree with that. It's just that you do notice the difference uh, when you yaw the aircraft. Um, I'm used to flying a Phantom or a Mavic and being able to do a, a turn where I yaw and um, push the right and left stick at the same time and it's a very smooth turn and everything looks fantastic. With the, um, with the Spark, if you yaw while you're flying, uh, you'll notice it because it'll look rough. Um, you have to go very, very slowly if you're going to make it look good. Um, the the two-axis gimbal does a fantastic job if you're flying in a straight line or if you're hovering. It's just when you're turning and banking a lot that things start to get a little bit messy. So uh, keep that in mind. You know, if you want to shoot video with the with the um, Spark, you can you can absolutely do it, and the video will look very nice. You just can't do a lot of spinning and yawing and turning. The next thing I'll say about the uh, Spark is that it is really slow in normal mode. Uh, it's great if you're learning how to fly. Honestly, it actually helps you. Um, avoid having any problems because you got plenty of time to react. Um, I do wish that normal mode was a little bit faster because I feel like it actually uh, has trouble keeping up with um, some things with it's following them in intelligent flight mode. I also noticed that when you switch it into sport mode, if you're in intelligent flight mode, intelligent flight mode goes away. So I was following a car and uh, the car was speeding up. It was somebody I knew and we were doing a test so everything was on the up and up. But the car was speeding up and I flipped it into sport mode thinking that would actually speed the quad up 
and it just stopped because it uh, wasn't going to follow the car anymore. So uh, keep that in mind that you can't do at least the follow part, um, and I don't think any of the intelligent flight modes if you're in sport mode. So the next big con, and this is the most obvious one, is the 1080p camera does not do 4K. Now, I say next big con. Honestly, for me, that's not that big of a deal. Um, I've started shooting some things in 4K and I intend to do that more, but I think for most people, uh, 4K is not necessary at this point and won't be for a few years yet. But uh, for just standard, you know, hanging out at the beach, playing with the dog, um, shooting real estate videos, that sort of thing, uh, 1080, 30 is, is pretty good. And then my last con has to do with the remote control and where uh, your phone goes in. Um, it's pretty ingenious. You know, this is like a little video game controller, which is cool. It's very similar to the Mavic's remote control. The Mavic, although, has an LCD screen built in. This one's a little cheaper, and that's why it doesn't have that LCD screen, but it feels very well made. Um, and you put your phone down in here, and you connect it either with this uh, extender cable I was talking about, the o OTG cable, or uh, via Wi-Fi. But the problem still is that this right here covers up the home button, at least on an iPhone. And so you can't push the home button very easily. So if you've got to get out of um, DJI Go for some reason, uh, you've got to take it out of, this, out of these claws in order to push the home button, which is kind of a pain. Uh, I wish that DJI would come up with something that was a little did just as good a job gripping the phone, because this does a pretty good job, but just left a space where you could get to that home button more easily. You know, overall, it's a great little quad. Uh, I'm a big fan. It fills a gap in the uh, price point that, that wasn't there before. Uh, Hubson had some $400, $300 drones. Parrot had some $300, $400 drones. Unique had the Breeze. But then immediately everything jumped up to the Mavic, which was $1,000. This fits in the middle there in that price point of um, you know, $500 to $700. And I think it does a very good job for that price point. It's also not for video and photo professionals. If you're a professional photographer, um, I don't recommend this. I'd recommend you get a Phantom or uh, an Inspire uh, or maybe a Mavic, but, but not the Spark for professional video and photos. Uh, if you're just doing some pictures of your house, pictures of the kids, having fun with it, social media pictures, absolutely, it's great for that. Um, it's also not for people who want to fly huge distances, meaning that um, you know if you're going to fly across a lake or something like that, this is not your, not your drone. It doesn't have the range, doesn't have the battery life. I wouldn't recommend it for that sort of thing. You're going to want to fly this in a field, uh, kind of in a contained area, and not go too high and not go too far with it. But the Spark is great for first-time drone buyers. If you're looking to get into something that's beyond just a toy drone, something that's a little more sophisticated and has more technology uh, at what I think is a pretty good price, the Spark is a great deal. That's perfect for you. Uh, it's also great for experienced pilots who want a second drone. You know, if you, if you own a Phantom or if you own an Inspire, Inspires are, are hard to get out and set up. I mean, they take some time. You have to uh, commit to getting out and flying an Inspire. Whereas this thing can be out in the air in two minutes or less. Um, it's really quick and easy to get it up in the air. It's very portable. So as a second little drone for goofing around or maybe even for scouting, you know, if you're gonna go out and, and shoot something and you wanna see what it's gonna look like from the air, you could take your Spark with you, take the shots you want, and then do it again with your Phantom. 4 Pro or your Inspire or your Phantom 3 or whatever. So as a secondary drone for somebody who already flies bigger ones, this is a great option. And then finally, if you're just somebody who wants to take your social media game to the next level and take some really cool selfies and take uh, some cool little videos that you can post online, this is a great quad for that. It shoots in 1080, uh, that, which is perfect for online posting. The camera quality is actually pretty decent. The photos are pretty decent. The video is really good. The ability to do selfies of uh, your group of friends just using your gesture is fantastic. All of those things are spot on. And so if you're someone who's never owned a drone before but, um, but is active in social media and enjoys taking pictures, this is a great option for you. So that's it. There's my review of the DJI Spark. Again, if you feel like it's overpriced and not worth it, I would love to hear why. Uh, please leave that in the comments below. If you have a Spark, if you don't have one, if you have questions, please, please leave me a comment. Um, if you like this video and found it useful, please give me a thumbs up. And if you wanna be part of the community, I'd love for you to subscribe to Ready, Set, Drone. Ready, Set, Drone is all about you, uh, the drone pilots, and what you wanna learn and what you wanna do. Uh, I make these videos because I know there's an audience for them, and that is you. So thank you for being that audience. 
And uh, please tune in to my comparison of the DJI Spark to the DJI Mavic. I think you'll find that really interesting if you're considering a drone. And as usual, fly safe, take care, and we'll see you next time on Ready, Set, Drone.